2 February 2021, and I'm joined by Mr. Kennedy Mandaza, spokesman for ZANU PF South Africa. How are you, sir? I'm good, and you? Happy New Year. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, how was your Christmas? What did you do over the festive season? No, my Christmas and uh, the festive season was uh, quite uh, exciting, hectic, and uh, I was in Zimbabwe, and I'm happy that um, I did. I managed to do all what I could do, and uh, what is quite pleasing is that uh, it, we were able to witness uh, some of the uh, developments that are taking place in the country. Okay, and uh, I would like to offer my condolences to Zanupia for the loss of a number of senior ministers in, in, your, in your party. Uh, do you have any comment about the coronavirus situation in the country? Um, it, it is true that ZANU-PF uh, has lost um, quite a number of uh, luminaries, uh, but um, it is not only restricted to, to, to ZANU-PF. Uh, in, in general, we have witnessed the, a, a rise in the number of deaths in Zimbabwe due to the coronavirus, and um, also the number of infections were also increasing, especially during the festive season going into January. And um, um, obviously, it was a surge that uh, had been predicted. The government did what it could to make sure that uh, we can contain uh, the spread of the virus. And we are happy now that uh, the numbers of people that are getting infected is going down. And uh, the number of deaths is also going down. And we hope that people will continue to follow through the regulations uh, that have been put in place by our government to mitigate uh, the spread of the virus. And um, what is exciting is also is that quite a number of Zimbabweans, even those that are in the rural areas, they have taken heed to uh, the lockdown restrictions. And uh, after having understood and seen uh, how deadly the uh, coronavirus is. So that's fantastic. I, I want us to go straight into the topic of the day. In late 2020, myself and yourself and other people witnessed a march by zanu -PF to the United States Embassy to ask for the removal of sanctions. And what, what do you think has been the outcome? Has there been a positive response to that appeal for the removal of sanctions? Um, yes and no. The, there have been a response. Um, they did partly that uh, to the effect that uh, we have seen, even in the corridors of America and the corridors of, the, of Britain, they have been talking about this issue of sanctions. That means that there is an impact in terms of uh, the call by the people of Zimbabwe for sanctions to be removed, not only in Zimbabwe, but also to, in those countries that are affected by the sanctions. But on the other end, I will say um, the response has, has not been uh, what the majority of us would have expected. Because what we want and we still call for is the unconditional removal of these sanctions. But sadly, the... Uh, Foreign Secretary of uh, the United Kingdom, Dominic Riab, uh, has further uh, sanctioned some of our people, and it is quite regrettable. Um, they've sanctioned four four people. Those are the four people that they've put on on the um, uh, sanctions list, and um, it is common knowledge that uh, the war between Zimbabwe and the West. He has never been on human rights infringements, as alleged, but it is fundamentally a retaliation against the Zimbabwean government uh, to ensure that um, um, what the Zimbabwean government has done through the overthrow of the white supremacy and neo-colonialism in Africa, and also the subsequent um, land reform program that took place in 2000, the British um, government is not happy up to today 
because their kith and kin lost land, which was the, their source of life, livelihood. Besides that, Zimbabwe, because of each, its rich um, resources, the British government, which is getting dry now because they've exited the, 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 the EU, they no longer have the channels that they used to have in getting resources, raw materials that have made Britain to be what it is. So in essence, what is happening here is a continued persecution of Zimbabwean officials based on the agenda of punishing Zimbabwe to ensure that they effect a regime change. And we are saying this will not take place during our day because what the, the British government is giving as reasons, there are things that have been said many times. And we are going to ask that when Zimbabweans went to war to fight for democracy, human rights, where was the United Kingdom when Zimbabweans were treated as second class citizens by the Rhodesians? Where was the United Kingdom when Zimbabweans were oppressed in their own country? Where was the United Kingdom when Zimbabweans' uh, human rights were considered non-existence? How many Zimbabweans died in the hands of their kith and kin? And now they come and say that they want to address an issue that took place in 2018 and 2019, which was quite regrettable. And for me and others, we say it is utter shameful for the United Kingdom to want now to prefect Zimbabwe and lecture it on human rights and democracy. Yet they have more to learn from Zimbabwe and Africa. After all, all these shenanigans that are taking place are an attempt to push Zimbabwe and Africa into submission so that they can put their regimes that are pliable to their insatiable hunger to plunder natural resources to sustain their countries okay there is a perception that the mohande commission recommendations have not been implemented and it was also mentioned in this new sanctions as one of the reasons can you give us an update on what has happened with the mohande commission report and whether it is justified to raise to raise this as one of the reasons for the sanctions there is no justification for the United Kingdom to take the Monsanto report as a way of trying to punish the four people that they've, pun they've put on the sanctions list. The Monsanto report is very clear. It was put on the table and the president and the government is seized with the issues that were raised by the Monsanto uh, Commission, working to make sure that the issues that were raised there they are taken into consideration and implemented to make sure that we do not have a recurrence of the same issues that have been cited. And the Zimbabwean government have been working on making sure that they correct the issues that have been uh, uh, raised by the Monsanto Commission and the issues that have been identified which could have uh, led to the, uh, to, to the issues that we witnessed in before 2018 and 2018 and even in 2019. The Zimbabwean government is seized with these issues. And for then the United Kingdom to then come in and say, because of the Muslante Commission, we are therefore going to, to, to punish these four people because they are complicity in what happened. I think it is neither here nor there. No one does condone, condone the death of any individual. And the Zimbabwean government is the first one to admit and say that it is wrong for anyone to die for anything in Zimbabwe. No wonder why they say that this issue was regrettable and why they are also seized with, the, uh, with correcting areas that needs to be corrected so that we don't have a repeat of issues and the scaffolds that have taken place in the country. Okay, there's issues around compensation of the victims of the violence that happened in 2018 and in 2019. 
This was also raised by the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission. Why is it taking long for the victims to be identified, for compensation to be given to the victims, and for, and for this information to be made public? Is it not taking too long? Is this not why countries like the United Kingdom are now starting to act in this way? I think we need to understand that this is a two-way process. When people have been, um, uh, the, the people that are supposed to be uh, compensated, they should also make themselves available. And the government should also play its part. So it is, while it is the responsibility of the government, which it has owned up to, to compensate these people, the people that are supposed to go and get compensation should avail themselves and the necessary information and details that are required. And once this is done, the government of Zimbabwe has a clear template to which people can go and verify whether these people have been compensated or not. So while it's the government of the United States, the United Kingdom government is coming in and other human rights organizations to say this should be done, I think we should give credit to the Zimbabwean government to having accepted to uh, compensate these people because of the need that they saw that they needed to be compensated. And it is also important that the people in the human rights organization, they should also give time to the government of Zimbabwe to go through the processes that are supposed to be done because it is accepted that they will be compensated. Okay. I, I think... The, if we go back to the Mohlande Commission report, there are people who came and testified in front of the commission. And there was a list drawn up of all the victims, including the husbands who came. Is, are these issues not being ignored? Why is the government taking so long to address this? I may not, uh, I may not speak on behalf of the government to say why has it taken this long? But there is a verification process. It doesn't follow that anyone who went there to testify and gave evidence on what happened had a credible story to tell. That's why the government has to do its due diligence to make sure that eventually the people that are compensated are the people that were affected. And like I've already indicated, the government has owned up to compensating these people. They will be compensated. I will not be in a position to say why has it taken this long, but what the government is going to do is to compensate them. I think that is the right route that almost everyone should commend to say that the government has owned up and it will own it will at some point when they've taken all the processes that they're supposed to take into, uh, into consideration um, uh, compensate these people. Okay. There has also been statements from the UK government that these sanctions don't harm ordinary people. They are targeted at specific government officials. What is your comment to that? Well, this is a song that we have heard. And contrary to that, what we have seen from the sanctions that were imposed in 20,000 and followed up by the other executive orders and so on, they have impacted so strongly on the government of Zimbabwe. Well, one other question that we need to ask is, what is the reason of sanctioning these government officials if the sanctions do not have any impact? You can't take a, a, a move that uh, has no impact. It cannot impact only on the four people. These are officials in government. Yes, they may not have wanted to travel to the United Kingdom. Yes, they do not have any in assets in the United Kingdom, which the United Kingdom knows very well. Why then sanction these four people? This is the vindictiveness that the United Kingdom government have. And we are saying it is only, it is only starting with these four. And if they are let to go on without people voicing the illegality and the evilness of these sanctions, they will go on and sanction almost everyone in Zimbabwe, regardless of their, uh, of their political standing in the country. They must get to a point that they understand 
Zim that Zimbabwe is a sovereign country and it brooks no interference from other countries, including Britain. We should be allowed okay. to do the things that we are doing for the benefit of Zimbabweans. The United Kingdom government is saying we should have political reforms, we should have economic reforms that should be implemented. Who are the people that should call for reforms in Zimbabwe? They are the Zimbabwean people. For whose benefit should be the economic and political reforms? They should be for the Zimbabwean people. And it should be very clear to the United Government that any political and economic reforms that are being implemented and those that will be implemented in future, these shall be informed by the interests and aspirations of the people of Zimbabwe. And they shall be made for the benefit of the people of Zimbabwe. Any other economic and political reforms that seek to pander to the whims and caprices of those that are not Zimbabweans shall not be undertaken in the country because they serve no interest for the people of Zimbabwe. Okay. Then we have also seen a number of arrests. So opposition members have been arrested since last year. Job Scala, Fadzai Mahere, Tendai Biti. We've also seen the arrest of a journalist, Hopo Chingon. This has brought a lot of attention on Zimbabwe. What is your comment on that? Well, you, you, you see, arrests should not be politicized. And when people are arrested, they should not be given uh, titles of the jobs that they carry. They sh because these people are said to have been arrested for crimes that, they've been com that they are said to have committed, or crimes that are alleged, are alleged that they have committed. And the presumption of innocence is still available. Everyone, regardless of his political standing or his standing in the, in the society, we should be equal to the law. So when people are arrested, we should not get the kind of outcry that we get. Let the due processes, the court processes take their, uh, uh, their, their process. And when we get to a point when we are not satisfied with what has happened, that is when people should arrest. Not when a person has been arrested, you already have people that are crying. Does it mean that people who have, uh, who have titles or who are political figures are better in terms of the laws of the country? We do not view the arrest of Hopewell Chingono, Job Sikala, Father Maher as a political, but is a way of making sure that Zimbabwe does not turn into a banana republic where people will do and say whatever they want to do and say at any given time. We need to be accountable. We need to be responsible citizens. We need to play to the rules and regulations of the country. And we believe that the government, the police that are entitled to that, they are doing their job. If Hopewell is, um, is innocent, he will get out of prison. If Fazai and anyone else, they will be acquitted. Let us allow the judicial system to carry, to do its duty. And we will see that it is a credible system that uh, is being used in the country. Okay, so it's been many, many years. Yes. Since new sanctions keep coming upon Zimbabwe, what is the next move for ZANU PF? What are you going to do next, given that sanctions keep coming? The main move of ZANU PF is uh, the party in government is to make sure that we continue to rally our people to use the resources and their capacity in the country to turn around the fortunes of the country and rely less on those that would want to give us aid. While least that aid comes with some conditionalities. Yes, we will continue to talk about 
to talk against sanctions. We will continue to call for their removal because to us, they are a crime to humanity. They are a declaration of war. They are a human rights abuse because so many people's lives are being abused because of these sanctions. We will continue to take that route. But more importantly, ZANU-PF is calling upon each and every individual to put their shoulders to the deck, to use the resources that are in the country, to use the skills that are in the country, and those of us that are out of the country to turn around the fortunes of the country because we have the capacity to do so. But we need no interference, especially negative interference from other countries. We need to be treated as an equal partner in the global village. Our re-engagement and engagement policy speaks to that. We need to understand that there is mutual interdependence among us countries. And that's all what we want. We do not want it to be uh, others to take us as small brothers. There is no big brother in this world. And we want that to uh, think particularly to those countries that think that they can continue to sanction us. Okay, Mr. Kennedy Mandaza, ZANU-PF South Africa spokesperson. And I wanted to ask, in terms of recruitment, what plans do you have for ZANU-PF South Africa this year? ZANU-PF South Africa will be on the overdrive to make sure that we uh, grow the membership in the country. We are part of the program that the uh, National Department uh, or the Commissariat Department has put in place to make sure that we raise at least 5 million members, which will translate into votes into 2023. And we have a responsibility. So the leadership that is here in South Africa will be seized with coming up with the strategies to reach out to all Zimbabweans in South Africa, to tell the Zimbabwean story that has been written by ZANU-PF while in power, and to encourage our Zimbabwean brothers and sisters to see reason to take part in the growth of our country. And this is what we will be doing and making sure that as ZANU-PF in South Africa, we also encourage our government, we encourage our party to continue to work on fulfilling the 2018 um, uh, promises that were made in the manifesto. And once that is done, we will see our 5 million people getting to that mark uh, uh, before the end of this year. And I want to say to Zimbabweans, they should continue to watch this space because we have good news for them good news for 2023 in terms of our recruitment okay so anyone who wants to contact mr mandaza obviously the number is on the screen and they can contact you about membership of zanu pf and also opportunities in zimbabwe the last question i wanted to ask you is with regards to dialogue opposition parties have been clamoring to talk to the president of zimbabwe uh, president Idi Mnangagwa. Uh, we have seen uh, Dr. Tokzani Kupe. We have seen Dr. Douglas Monzora. And last week, Tendai Beat. All of them asking to meet and talk to President Mnangagwa. But there has been no response from President Mnangagwa. What is going to happen? What is the position of ZANU PF in terms of dialogue? I think the position of the president of the country with the president of the party has not changed. And the position of the party has not changed. It has always been the desire of President Munangagwa and ZANU-PF is the party that he leads, that all political actors in the country come together and discuss issues that are pertinent to the livelihoods of the people of Zimbabwe. It is for that reason that he created the political actors dialogue, which is meant for all political actors to come together to dialogue and proffer solutions to our country. And it is a welcome, um, welcome news that uh, Dr. Tokozani Kupe, uh, Douglas Monzora, uh, even to diabetes now, 
are seeing reason for joining this dialogue. It is important that when we talk about dialogue, the door has always been open for all political actors to join in. And those that have interest to see Zimbabwe grow, to join in the political actors dialogue. And it will be a welcome move if Nelson Chamisa and the Tendai Bidi and anyone else in, in the MDC Alliance and anyone else in the MDCT and anyone else in the, 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 coming to, with the Tokozani to go in the political actors, uh, the, the, to join in, in Poland and begin to engage the government that is there. And if there is need within that forum to hold the government to, to, to account, because why least it might be possible for two people to meet and talk outside Poland, the official position is, the political actors dialogue platform is the official platform where all actors should go and join in. And Nelson Chamisa and his MDC Alliance uh, Douglas Monzura and the MDCT and are most welcome to this dialogue. And it is the right thing, the right move that they should do so that they become relevant in the body politic of Zimbabwe. Right. Thank you very much, sir. I always enjoy talking to you and I hope that we'll continue to have these conversations so that people can continue to understand the position of ZANU-PF on these important issues. Is there anything else you want to say? before we close this discussion? Um, I want to say that um, fellow Zimbabweans, let us continue to mask up. Let us continue to, to follow the protocols laid down by our governments. It is important to do so because the coronavirus is real. It has killed so many people and there's a potential to kill so many other people if we do not take heed of these regulations that have been made by our, um, our governments. Lastly, as Zimbabweans, let us cherish and value peace, unity, and development. These are critical cornerstones for our country because we do not have any other country other than Zimbabwe. Therefore, we need to unite and work together as brothers and sisters for the development of our country. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy Mandaza, spokesman of ZANU-PF. South Africa. I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you so much and most welcome.